Hello everybody, it's Friday. Ooh, today is uh, October the 22nd. Holy cow, October has just flown by. Am I the only one who thinks October is just like in a blink of an eye, it's almost November. Hello everybody, it's so great to see you all. Thanks for joining me today. I have a really fun, easy, super easy little stocking. There is a free template PDF down in the description box. It's two pages, just like this. You'll see there's no written instructions. It's just the templates. I'm gonna walk you through how to make this super easy two fat quarter stocking. We're only using two fat quarters to make this. Of course, there's a million different variations. You could add a batting to this if you wanted to. You could do all kinds of stuff with it. You could add, <coughs> pardon me, I'm losing my voice today. You could add applique to this if you wanted to. We're going to keep it super easy today. Super easy. Two fat quarters. Vicki, thank you so much uh, for helping moderate. Oh, your computer is doing an update. Doesn't that happen at the most inconvenient times? <laughs> you ever notice that? Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Okay, so yeah, the free pattern or templates, the pattern is down in the description box. That's where you're going to get that. I'm going to switch over to the cutting mat. We're going to take a look at it because what you're going to do is you're going to cut out the three, the three different pieces, right? Come on, fingers. You can work today. You're going to cut out the three different pieces and you're going to tape them together and your Wonka Doodle pattern is going to look something like that, right? It looks a little funny. It looks really long, but this stocking does have a cuff. So part of that length is going to fold over and give us our cuff. Isn't that super cute? It kind of looks a little vintage. Doesn't it look a little vintage with a little bit of a longer little foot area? I think it's adorable. This is what we're making today. Come on in, everybody, and get yourself situated. Uh, I have a couple of fat quarters here today. I'm going to do a little bit of a whimsical stocking today. Uh, I had these fat quarters. Let's see. These are, because I know someone's going to ask, Riley Blake. What's the name of them? Butterflies and Berries. It's not really Christmas fabric, is it? <laughs> But I think it's going to make a nice little whimsical stocking. There you go. Butterflies and berries. It is so great to see y'all. So great to see you. Just letting you know next Friday we are going to come live. But we're not going to do a project per se. I thought it would be great every couple weeks just to hang out with you. Maybe we could do a Q&A session if you have questions about projects you're working on. If you just want to hang out and sew or something like that. Next Friday, we're not doing a specific project. We're just going to hang out. So that's next Friday. I'm going to warm up my iron because we are going to get started. You can see on these two stockings that I made. I did glue down uh, some of the snowflakes that we made from last week. Y'all remember that? There's a big stack of these ornaments that I did, or freestanding lace, right? I have a whole bunch of them. We'll see if any of these go with the stocking fabrics that I choose today. But uh, I showed this technique last Friday. If you did not catch that video, go to my YouTube channel and uh, you can watch that video, a lot of fun. Uh, I have seen some of your snowflake pictures over on the Creative Crew, so y'all have been having fun with this technique. And it was a blast. So uh, the two stockings that I've already made, I'm gonna tell you, I just kind of cheated. <laughs> I took a really easy route and I used some clear Fabri-Tac glue on the back side of my snowflake and just plopped it down right on my snowflake. I did not sew it down at all. It is a clear permanent glue. You could wash this if you wanted to and your snowflake is not going anywhere. 
So that is an idea. If you wanted to decorate really easy the front of your stocking and you don't want to sew anything on, try using some Fabri-Tac glue. So for this stocking, what I have is some fat quarters. And again, I'm going to take a shortcut. Let me just show you the little hanger I put in here. This is just some ribbon. You, of course, could make a little hanger from bits left over from your fat quarters. You will have enough to make your own hanger if you wanted to. But I'm just going to use some ribbon as my hanger. And what else do we have? Uh, some scissors, a rotary cutter. I do have a clear Elmer's glue stick. That's going to come in handy when placing our hanger. And I have some pinking shears and some pens. Pretty basic supplies, right? Let's pick out two of these back quarters. I kind of really like the white stripes. And what do we want to do as the cuff? A red cuff. Hmm, which one, which one? We'll do this one. <laughs> I think, no, let's do this one. All right, so there are my two fat quarters for today. <clears throat> I know, I did cheat. I did. I'm going to open these fat quarters up, y'all, and I'm going to have to give them a quick press. I probably won't press them as good as I normally would because they got some good creases in there from being folded up so long, right? But I am going to give them a quick press just to flatten them out a little bit. Two fat quarters. Of course, you could most definitely make this from yardage, right? You need a piece of fabric that is about uh, 21, 22 inches wide and about 18 inches or 18 inches wide and 22 inches long, right? The size of a fat quarter. You'll need two of those. Let me move this pressing board over a little bit. Oh, it's so great to see y'all. Now don't judge me on my pressing. I'm just gonna do a real quick press, <laughs> really quick. I might even use some steam. I just really want to flatten this out just a little bit, at least. Just a little bit. What is the weather like where you guys are? Uh, today feels like summer outside. It's kind of humid and a little bit on the warmer side. It does not feel like fall at all. Not at all. Yeah, isn't this fabric gorgeous? It really is. Dari, thank you so much for helping moderate the chat. It really takes a lot of stress off knowing people are keeping an eye on everything. See, look, I still have some creases. You might not be able to see them too much, but they're there. We'll just give a quick press from this side. These are kind of the perfect size stockings to give little gifts in, right? If you have a little gift exchange with friends or family, these are kind of a perfect little stocking size. Now, I do have patterns for larger stockings, more traditional size stockings, right? These are a little bit smaller, and they go together so quick. You're going to see. All right, so I've pressed really quickly these two fat quarters, right? And it doesn't all fit in the camera, but it's long ways, 18 inches, 22 inches, roughly, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the pretty sides together and fold it in half. Ooh, I just hit the camera. We're going to fold it in half just like that. So it's still 18 inches by 11 inches, right? Roughly. 
some fat quarters are different. We're going to fold it in half and I'm just going to give that a quick press just to flatten it a little bit on that fold. You're going to do that for both of your fabrics. Put the pretty sides together. Pretty sides together. And give them a press. There we go. We can move that out of the way a little bit now. All right, so let's figure out which one is going to be the lining and the outside cuff. Uh, I think this red one, I want to be the inside lining and the outside of the cuff. So this is our lining fabric. We're going to bring in our taped together pattern and we're just going to lay it right inside. Right inside. Does that fit in the camera? There you go. Just like that. And then I'm going to take a marker. And y'all, uh, I'm going to use a dark marker for the video. But I suggest using a marker like a water-soluble marker, a heat-erasing marker, or a pencil, something like that, chalk. Uh, we're going to trace the outside edge of this pattern, right? I'm just using this fabric marker so that y'all can see. <laughs> We're tracing right onto the fabric, right around the edge of this stocking. This is actually gonna be our sewing line. Right around the stocking. Dun, 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 like that. Now, uh, with the lining fabric, you'll see these little indicators on the template. I want you just to scoot this over a little bit. Give yourself an indication of where you're going to insert your hanger. And then, so I don't forget, I like to do a little indication of an opening. The lining, we are going to leave this portion open. And when we're sewing all the way around, we are going to make sure to backstitch at these two places and leave that open because this is how we're going to flip everything right side out. All right, so this is our lining fabric. I'm just going to give this a pin in the middle like that so that these fabrics don't shift. And I'm going to cut away some of this extra fabric, right? And if you wanted to, remember I said you'd have extra if you want to make your hanger from the same fat quarters, look at all of this right here. You could cut yourself a piece of fabric that was like two inches by four inches. That would be great to make a little hanger from. And you could certainly do that from both of these fabrics if you wanted. Either. To keep it simple, y'all, I'm just going around with my rotary cutter. You could use scissors if you want. We're going to trim a good portion of the extra fabric off and leave a little seam allowance. We're not trimming this right on the line. Like that. See all that extra fabric? Don't throw that away. <laughs> all right so we have some really good chunks to go into the scrap basket right so now that we've trimmed a good portion of the extra away let's focus on our hanger for a minute i'm just going to pull off a section of this ribbon and fold it in half you can make your hanger as long or as short as you want right I'd say this piece is one, two, three, four, five, six and a half inches long. This is where I'm going to use my glue stick. And this is going to be so handy to make sure that this hanger stays nice and neat, right? 
I'm going to take a little bit of glue stick, just put some on the end of that ribbon, and I'm going to fold it and just hold it for a second. just to let it grab hold for a second. And with our hanger, we're actually inserting it in between our two layers of fabric, right? So there's my little arrow. I'm gonna lift up that top piece and just put my hanger right inside. I might have to take that pin out for a second just for it to lay flat. Right there. Guess what? I'm going to add a little bit of glue <laughs> onto both pieces of my fabric. And again, that's going to help just keep that hanger in place, right? And I'm just going to press it for a second. Mm -mm 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 -mm. We can repin that. And that's all the glue that we're using, so I can put the lid back on that. Now we're gonna let this just sit for a few minutes and let that dry. And while that's drying, I can go, I like to pin around the edge of the stocking in a few places just to keep those fabrics together. It just takes a couple pins. All right, so there's our lining. We're going to set that aside and we're going to repeat most of the same steps for the outside portion of our stocking, right? Except we don't have to mark it for a hanger and we don't have to mark it for an opening, right? So we're just going to lay that right onto the fabric. This will be the outside of our stocking. This has stripes, so I kind of want to make sure the stripes are all going kind of straight, <laughs> right? And we're going to trace this. All the way around. Again, this will be our sewing line. Just like that. We're done with the marker. We're done with our pattern. I'm going to throw just a couple pins in here so I can move this around. And again, see that big chunk of fabric? You'll want to save that. You could make your hanger from that. I think I need a new blade in my cutter. All right, we're saving that chunk of fabric. And we're just trimming all the way around. I don't know that this part has to be exactly really neat because I am going to come back in after we sew these lines with my um, pinking shears and give these curved edges a little pinking so that it helps uh, keep those seams nice and flat when we turn everything right side out, right? Um, so the, the trimming part doesn't really have to be neat. You can come back in and really trim that better once you get this seam sewn, right? And I've run out of pins. Let's move this right there. We'll move this right there and we'll just be really extra careful sewing this one. 
All right, so both with the lining and the outside fabric, we're gonna bring this over to the sewing machine. I like to use a little bit of a shorter stitch because it's gonna help me get a really nice stitch and turned edges on these curvy parts, right? So I'm gonna lower my stitch length to uh, like a 2.2. That might be different for your sewing machine. And we're gonna sew starting at the top all the way around and we're gonna stop right here. And we are going to backstitch at the beginning and the end. We're not gonna sew this little line right up here, okay? That's really just for size to know how much to trim off. <laughs> and then on our lining, we're gonna make sure to leave the opening, right? Let's switch it over to the sewing machine. Can you embroider the snowflakes? Absolutely. So if you wanted to do uh, some embroidery on your stocking, if you wanted to add some applique or some other elements that you're sewing down to your stocking, you really kind of want to do it at this point, right? Before you sew all the way around uh, on the line, you could separate this and do any stitching or embroidery at this point while you have separate pieces. I think it would be really, really, really difficult to do it once you have sewn all the way around, right? So now would be the time to do any of that stuff. All right, I'm gonna switch you over to the sewing machine. There we go. Again, I'm just using a straight stitch and I've lowered my stitch to a 2.2. We're gonna start right there. And I can take these pins out as we go. I'm gonna do a little back stitch just to lock it. I do have my open toe foot on, so uh, hopefully you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing today. Normally I don't use my open toe foot, but I do think for video purposes, it does help see a little bit more. If you stitch off the line, no one's going to ever know. You can see I sort of take my time around the curvy areas. All right, so this is the lining. This is the opening we're gonna leave in the lining. I'm gonna back stitch just to lock that in place. And then I'm just going to jump right down over here. We're going to lock that in. And then we're sewing right up to the top. And we'll backstitch there as well. 
So there's our lining. We're going to bring in the outside of our stocking. In this one, we're just sewing all the way around. There's no opening. Those little curves I like to take a couple stitches and turn take a couple stitches and turn but when you do that make sure your needle is in the down position so you don't lose your place I think you could knock out a whole bunch of these stockings in a day's time. I really do. They're super quick. Doesn't my sewing machine sound so much better this week? <laughs> Y'all should have seen what was down in my bobbin area. No wonder it was so squeaky last week. Uh, my Juki, you don't oil this machine, right? Some machines you do, some you don't. This one, you don't oil it. But when she gets dirty down in the bobbin area, she makes a lot of noise. Last week, she was so squeaky. And I thought it was because I had used the wrong bobbin. <laughs> I had a great big ball of fuzz down there. She sounds so much better this week. All right, again, we're gonna sew to the top and a back stitch just to lock that in. All right, so there's our two pieces. <laughs> Vicki said it was a rat's nest. It was, Vicki. It was huge too, it was a great big, great big pile of stuff. All right, so we have our two pieces. We're gonna take these pins out. <laughs> And at this point, I like to bring in my peaking shears. You, of course, could just do little notches in the curved areas, right? You could do that. I just find it easy to use the pinking shears most of the time. I'm going to go in and just pink these little edges that are curved. Although I always, am I the only one who finds pinking shears a little awkward to work with? <laughs> like they do their job so well, but I just think they're kind of awkward to use. So I'm just going around the curved edges with this. Trying to be careful not to cut into my stitches. Y'all, I am not, <laughs> I am not really great about cleaning out my bobbin area. No, I should be much better about it than I am. I just get so busy and I most of the time I'm just so excited to get started I don't even think about it all right so there's the curved areas 
And then I'm gonna take my regular scissors and trim away a little bit the areas that have where I've left a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like that. I do like to leave my opening a little bit bigger though. Oh, that is my opening. Don't cut that, Lisa. There we go. So nice and trimmed. We're gonna do the same thing for the outside part. Ooh, it is hot in here today. I've had the windows open all week, even on a little bit of the warmer days. It's just been nice to have fresh air come in. But uh, we do have like cars going by, school buses going by, and I didn't want the like the extra background noise while we were live. So it's kind of warm in here. Y'all watching me struggle. <laughs> That's all right. We're among friends. Y'all can watch me struggle with these pinking shears. They do do a really great job in those curved areas, so it's worth it. And I'm just going to go through and trim away a little bit of this bulk. I like to leave about a quarter inch seam allowance. So I only really have to trim it up just a little, a little bit, right? Okay, so that is the outside. I'm using the white as the outside of my stocking. We're gonna take this lining. Let me make sure I'm doing this right because I forget. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Yes, turn the lining right side out. It's been a couple days since I made those other ones. I just want to make sure I'm not gonna mess up. We're going to take our lining fabric, and at this point, we're going to turn it right side out, right? So I'm just reaching my hand all the way down to the tippy toe area of the lining, and we're going to pull that right side out. Could you do this on a serger? Linda, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't see why you couldn't. I've seen people make quilts on a serger. I don't have a serger, so I cannot answer your question like 100%. I've never used one, but I don't really know why you couldn't. I'm just going through with my finger and I'm poking along those seams just to sort of flatten them out and push them out. I would love to have a pinking blade. I don't have one. And I'm a little bit of a tightwad. <laughs> I've looked at them in the store and I'm in the store and I'm like, pinking blade or fabric? Which one do I wanna spend my money on? Fabric it is. As often as I use the pinking shears, I'd much rather have the fabric than a pinking blade. But I do think it would be nice to have. All right, so our lining fabric is turned right side out. Our outside of our stocking is still inside, right side in, right? We're going to insert the lining into the body of our stocking. And this part's a little awkward. <laughs> Maybe just because of the size of the stocking. But we're just going to stick that lining right inside. It's a little awkward. I like to get it started and then I take some pokey tools or something. Where is... Here we go. I'm just gonna use one of my longer like uh, quarter inch rollers and just stuff that down in there. 
This part does not have to be pretty. We just want it stuffed down inside and we really want to focus on the top, right? We want to make sure that hanger goes down inside. We're going to match up the raw edges of both of our stocking pieces. We're also going to match up these side seams, right? So we're going to match up the two side seams and that raw edge. I'm going to throw a little pin in there just to keep them together. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Match up those seams. Throw a pin right in there. Ow, don't poke your finger like I just did. And then we're just going to make sure we're going to situate and fuss with the raw edge all the way around. See how it's kind of lined up? You might have to fuss with it a little bit. And get those two raw edges nice and lined up. We're going to bring this to the sewing machine. We're going to sew all the way around. All the way around. For this, I like to use that line as a guide, but I like to sew on the left side of that line because I've used a, a fabric marker and I don't really want anybody to see that. So I'm going to actually sew on the left side of that line uh, and use like a eighth inch, quarter inch on the left side of that line, right? So this might be a little awkward. We're going to just pull the top portion over and we're going to start sewing, laying that flat right underneath the presser foot. Let's see. Right there is good. We're going to back stitch when we start. And then we're going to start sewing. And every few stitches, you're going to have to resituate the inside of your stocking, right? You could, well, I don't know if the opening is big enough. My free arm is a little bit chunky. So I really don't know that the opening is big enough to take off my table and use the free arm, but your machine might be different. See how that's a little awkward? I just like to make sure that it's nice and flat. And right there is where we started. We're just going to sew past that just a little bit. And we'll back stitch and lock that in place. So here comes the fun part. We're going to reach back inside, right? And we're going to pull this lining back out. We're just going to pull it right back out and it's going to look a little funny for a minute. So now our stocking looks like this, right? We're going to go and find that opening inside the lining and we're pulling all of this through that opening. So I just like to reach down as far as I can go. That's a pretty good size opening. So you should be able to just use your fingers and reach in. And we're pulling everything right out of that opening. Pull 
right? And then again, we can use our fingers just to go in and poke out all of those seams along the curved areas. Might be a little bit trickier for the body part because that's reaching in pretty far. I just like to take my finger and just rub right along those curved parts. And at this point, y'all, we are just about done. I always have to fuss with this just a little bit. <laughs> poke out, poke out. There you go. All right. So here we are. The outside of our stocking, the inside of our stocking. We're going to search for that opening. Mine is right there. I'm going to bring this back to the sewing machine for the last time today. And I'm just going to tuck in that seam allowance. And I'm going to top stitch that closed, right close to the edge of the fabric, right? You could hand sew it if you want. I don't think anyone's ever going to see the inside of your stocking, but if you want to hand sew it close, you could certainly do that. I would probably use a fabric, a, a thread that matches your fabric. Mine does not. Again, no one's probably going to ever see it. And that's just a short little seam right there just to close that opening. And that's it. We're going to restuff the lining back into the stocking, right? We're going to push it down in. And this part I have to fuss with a lot. <laughs> this might actually take the longest of making the whole stocking. I don't know. Some days I find it easier than others. Do you ever have days like that? I'm just putting my whole arm in and just working that lining right down inside. I'm just working it, working it, working it with my fingers, pushing that lining all the way down. And see, I'm just really pushing that lining into the curvy parts. That pinked edge really helps you keep the curvy parts and having a little bit of a smaller seam allowance really helps you get a nice flatter edge to your stocking, right? There we go. Isn't that pretty with the stripes? It's not really Christmas fabric, but it kind of looks Christmassy, doesn't it? Ooh, I like that. Okay, this is the last part, y'all. We're going to just fold down however much you want to fold down of your cuff. That's it. I do like to fold it down so at least that little hanger is exposed like that, right? But you could fold down more, and you could fold down less. Look how cute that is. Oh my goodness. I'm glad I went with the polka dots. You might have to play around with that lining to get it situated. Once you get it all in there and nice and flat, it's going to stay like that. There we go. That's much flatter. Isn't she so cute? I have a little thread I want to cut off. Oh my goodness, I love it so much with the polka dots. Not your traditional Christmas fabric. But look how fun it is just to go a little bit more whimsical and use white and red as your Christmas, right? Doesn't that make a really fun stocking? I think it's adorable. 
Now, of course, you know, you could have your stocking going this way, or you could flip it around and have it going the other way. <laughs> There's no rules. And that's it, y'all. Now, because I'm live and because I go slower during the lives, uh, it's taken a little bit longer than it did to make these two. I really think you could knock out a whole bunch of these really, really quickly. And if you find a sale on fat quarters, like I did the one time, uh, 99 cents a fat quarter, imagine that you could make these stockings fairly inexpensive, right? But yes, I don't know if any of these will look right with the fabrics that I picked out. Ooh, maybe this red one. Does that go yes or no? I might just leave this one blank. Linda said, do you want to tack down the cuff so it stays in place while you, when you're hanging it? You might. You could certainly do that, Linda. Uh, I guess it's kind of staying in place anyway, but if you put something in it, maybe, maybe it would start to roll back up. But it's sort of fitted. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's fitted so nicely that I don't know how much uh, it would change the shape of your cuff if you hung this with stuff in it. Uh, but certainly, you could hand tack, just do a whip stitch around the edge if you wanted to. I don't see why you couldn't do that. Pat said, why couldn't you cut the lining longer and turn it over to make the cuff? I guess you could do that too, Pat. Lori said, if I rewind on this video, will it put me at the beginning so I can make these? Yes, Lori. And once I'm done with the live, the video will be up on my channel. So you can watch it whenever you're ready to make some. And just turn me on and follow right along. So yeah, you'll be able to watch the replay. Yes, you could embroider names on the cuff. You could do the glue and the glitter. I'm more of a traditionalist with the glue and the glitter. But embroidery looks phenomenal, right? Sheila said adding some rickrack on the cuff would be... That would be cute. I have a hard time finding cute rickrack. I would like some wider rickrack. I have a hard time finding that. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Marsha. Thank you, Lori. Ooh, Practically Creative says, I have a new flourish and I'm loving embroidery. I have a love-hate relationship with embroidery. <laughs> some days I love it, some days I do not. Sue said, it's better blank. Linda said, yes, yes. Debbie said, no. Ruth said, yes. I think I'm leaning towards leaving it blank, y'all. I think that's pretty cute all on its own. If I wanted to add one of these, it would be super easy though. Uh, again, I would just put a little bit of the Fabri-Tac glue on it and it's clear and it dries clear. And it's still very flexible. See that? It's still very flexible. It's not very stiff. So I like to use the Fabri-Tac glue and it's super easy, right? Just put some glue along the edges and put it down. And it dries really quick. Um, you could take some matching thread and just do a whip stitch right around the edge too, right? If you love hand sewing, I do not. <laughs> but if you love doing that, you can certainly attach things that way too. I think I'm going to leave this one blank. And just let the fabric speak for itself. But that's it, y'all. This is it. See how easy that is? 
Ooh, Lori Holt has a line of Rick Rack. Okay, let me write that down because I have a project that I would really like some wider Rick Rack for. I'm going to go so search that probably tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, uh, the Fabri-Tac glue is permanent. It's not going to wash out. So if you did ever need to wash your stockings and you've used that, it's going to stay. Ooh, Marcia said you can also use a Cricut to cut out names. Yes. Oh, I love the way you're thinking. I love using my Scan and Cut to cut stuff out. Linda said she's found some at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to tell you, I have a Hobby Lobby. It's about an hour and 10, 15 minutes away. I don't think I'd mind the road trip, though. So I just want to thank you all so much for hanging out with me. Again, if you missed it, next week we will be live. But we're not going to do a project project. I don't know what I'll be doing, but mostly it's just going to be us hanging out and talking and chatting. So some of you are going to love it and some of you are going to be like, okay, Lisa, I'll see you the week after because I don't do much chatting <laughs> and that's not my thing and I get it. Y'all are so welcome. Y'all are so welcome. I hope that you make these stockings. And if you do, I hope you share pictures over on the Creative Crew. If you don't know what Creative Crew is, it's a Facebook group. And you can find the link down in the description box. And uh, if you don't do Facebook, I know several of you do not. And you make this stocking, you can send me pictures through Etsy. I would love to see it. My Etsy link is in the description box. And don't forget, if you just joined in or you joined in after we started, there is, let me change this, a two-page free template page uh, for the stocking pattern. Right? No written instructions because I walked you through how to make it. And uh, I hope you all have fun with this. Da -da 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 -da. That's really it for today, y'all. I hope that y'all have a fantastic weekend. I think after today, it's supposed to cool off a little bit. Like, weather in Virginia, it's supposed to be fall. It feels like summer. But then you get some really chilly days that puts you in the fall mood, right? And then, bam, you're blasted with summer air again. <laughs> so unpredictable. I hope y'all have some nice weather this weekend. I hope you have some awesome time being creative sometime this weekend. And I'll see you next Friday. Unless you don't like to chat. And then I'll see you the week after. <laughs> Let's see. Where are we? There we are. Again, thank you so much to my moderators. Thank you for keeping an eye on the chat so I can focus on what we're doing. All right, everybody. I will see y'all next week. Bye. Have fun with this.